Well, there you go, guys. We cut and faced some induction hardened 18 mil steel that I'm going to use to press a double set of bearings into the spindle housing. I've got a couple of these spindle housings sent to me. And that way we can beef it up for, for milling because I don't think that one ball race is really enough. I think we really should... It'd be okay for aluminium and brass, but if you want to try it on steel, no, I think you're going to bugger these up pretty quick. So I'm going to put in two, a pair at each end. Whoops, so I can pick them up. You can actually put six in. There's room for six bearings. But of course, if you ever fit bearings, you always press them in. You never, ever hit them with a hammer or beat on them because they will split, crack, they're, they're not meant for that sort of activity. You always use a press, and if you're going to use a press, I do it in the vise. I always use a mandrel to press them in. So that's what that is, just a bit of old rubbishy stuff, but it just shows you what a great job these little spindle assemblies can do. And they can let you machine stuff on a small lay that you couldn't do any other way, unless you, as I said, unless you quench and then Reharden the steel. It's not necessary. Just slice it off. So I used a one mil uh, wide by seventy-five mil diameter cutting disc. I spun the uh, the disc with a little seven seven five motor running off of thirty-six volts. So that was thirty-six volts. That was its maximum voltage that they recommend, but it will go higher. And after all that cutting, the motor was stone cold, absolutely stone cold. So there you go, guys. It just shows you what these little units can do. They're not toys. They can actually do serious stuff. And, yeah, they can do stuff you couldn't do, really, any other way in its unaltered form. Okay, hope you found it interesting. See you next time. Cheers.